welcome back. I have always loved Newport, Newport Beach, Newport Harbor, all things Newport. And we have Professor Pete Weitzner here, who is usually on with us as our political all things OC pundit and realist. And today he's coming at us with a whole new title as the executive producer of a new documentary, The Golden Age of Newport Harbor. So Pete, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. And what, where did this come from and what are you doing? <laughs> I'd, I'd much rather talk about this than the economy only because, as we discussed, we're probably going to have a recession in the next 18 months or so. So I, so Newport, 30 years in Orange County for me, like you, Lauren, from the East Coast. And I've always spent some time in Newport Beach, but it became my, I've lived all around Orange County, my adopted home about four years ago. Uh, live on Balboa Island. Walked into the Balboa Island Museum, Newport Beach, which is the only historical museum in Newport Beach. It's fantastic. It's on Marine Avenue, the main merchant uh, strip here on Balboa Island. And the history, you know, there's a Facebook group you might know about. It. It's called Newport Before the OC. And it's got 22, 23,000 members. A lot of them have moved out. But the history, especially of Newport Harbor, really all of Orange County, is really an untold story. And we have this reputation of the last 20 years of the OC and all the reality shows. And, but the folks who built the county, built Newport Beach, and especially this period, the golden age, the 40s through the 60s, when so many of the Hollywood stars, and they were stars in those days, Maybe the most famous to start would have been Bogart, Bogey and Bacall. They got, I think, either engaged at the Balboa Bay Club. On through, of course, John Wayne. Uh, but <laughs> Errol Flynn, Clark Gable, they were all here. But it's not really told. There's never been much media down here. It certainly wasn't in those, eight, those days. They all sailed. They were carousers of the first. Mean, Humphrey Bogart didn't, unfortunately, pass away at 57 of, of esophageal cancer for nothing. And they discovered this great harbor where they could sail and pretty much, as a friend of mine put it after watching a documentary, pretty much get away with anything. <laughs> and it, it's just, but it's an amazing time period. I think once was described by a journalist of the little it is written about it. They found safe harbor in Newport Harbor. And so we did, I walked into the museum Wonderful people run it. And they said, let's do a documentary. It was during COVID like that we shot it last summer. So we, we did it just from the water. In other words, we just did the harbor perspective. There's a whole more you could do just from an inland perspective, but just cruising around the harbor with a gentleman who's lived here his whole life and is a great storyteller, Tim Mang. Tell, it's literally every house you go by, this is who used to live there. This, this, this producer. I mean, Henry Mancini and Johnny Mercer lived next door to each other. Most of them lived on Lido Isle, by the way. It's unbelievable. It's really not told much. There's not even many photos, but it was an amazing time to be here. And for, you know, people were starting, of course, to live here more. And for them to just everywhere they'd go, oh, there's Natalie Wood over there getting, you know, some ice cream at, at Will Wright's, I think it was called, or... Uh, at Hershey's, I mean, they were everywhere, uh, at, but no one bothered them, or, or they did, and, and they had great experiences with them. Which is so interesting. I've always thought of Palm Springs as that place, but really, when you say that they nobody bothered them, they had their lives, they had their privacy, there was no social media, there was little media that was not absolutely controlled by the, uh, by the movie houses themselves. So they really got to have their lives. I find that just fascinating. And I'm so excited that you dove into this. So is the, is the movie available? It is. So if, if you want to get uh, either the stream or the DVD at the museum website, balboaislandmuseum.org. Uh, and we did a screening. Everything is in the perspective of, it was in, or in the context of COVID. We did a, a screening, the only one we've had at the Balboa Yacht Club, which is that together with, you know, so much of that sailing life centered around 
uh, the yacht clubs and the two biggest were the Newport Harbor Yacht Club and the Balboa Yacht Club, the BYC. I mean, you look at the registry of who belonged and it was people like Bogart and his famous boat, the Santana. And um, uh, so we did the screening and it is available. It was more just a fun thing to put together. And thankfully we had this gentleman, Tim Mang, his mom, uh, her best friend ran the Bell was the social director of the Balboa Bay Club. That was kind of the epicenter. The presidents would stay there, people like Goldwater and whatnot. And so he was privy to all these stories. There was there were these two famous places they would all go. Uh, Bogey and his pals. Cagney was a big Cagney owned Collins Island here for a while. He owned much of the land that's today Hogue Hospital, him and his brother, and the, their boat, the Swift. Uh, Tyrone Power, uh, uh, Dick Powell, I mean, June Allison, these were huge stars. Uh, uh, and this guy, uh, Tim Mang, he knows all these stories about them. Like I said, not published, but sort of two places. There was the Castaways, which was what is the Castaways development today in Newport Beach, above the, uh, the, the cliffs of Dover there. And then there was Christian's Hut, named for Fle the Fletcher Christian uh, character in the in the movie where supposedly Clark Gable lived up above there and they would all they, you know they'd shoot a movie be three to four weeks and then they had 40 weeks to sail and drink and come down to Newport Harbor and play and they all and so many of them did and also you know you talk about media it was the opposite up there. You had these gossip columnists, right? That were, and they were kind of being, like they were bigger than life in those days. And that's what drove so many of them to come down here. And you could say maybe culminating. I mean, John Wayne was down here, I guess, you know, he was shooting, movie, you know, famously got hurt in a surfing accident, right? In the wedge. I think when he was a teenager, he was going to USC. Uh, and, but it kind of culminates with Wayne and, and Bud, people like Buddy Ebsen, but all those 40s, 50s stars, um, they were all here. And most of them lived, they, they're, they're home, most of them lived on Lido, which ha always has given off the impression that it's a private island, it's not. Mm -hmm. But you could literally just go down the list, down the rows of homes and different Hollywood stars. And not to mention, like as I mentioned, big time industrialists, millionaires, billionaires, and they all built what is, you know, Newport Harbor is this, this amazing, what is it, the big, world's biggest little harbor? It's a great place, so deep to, to, to sail, and it's got this great, still to this day, this water lifestyle. It's a lot more crowded today. <laughs> all, all the longtime residents would tell you, you should have been here, should have been here then. Kids would sail to school on these little 12 foot, <laughs> yes, I know. They'd go, to school, they'd go to school barefoot and they'd sail and that's yeah oh my gosh oh pete we could go on with this for hours i'm i'm gonna go this that's my weekend watch so i'm totally up for watching the movie Ooh, this I'll, I'll, yes i'll send i'll send you the link definitely a lot of fun. I out to our viewers and i hope everyone will take advantage of this golden opportunity to learn about the golden age of Newport Harbor. I'm so excited. It's very nostalgic. You know, the last thing I would tell you, uh, Lauren or Amy, is that, like I said, the reputation now, I mean, it's still great. I mean, who doesn't want to visit, come to, New to Newport Beach and to Newport Harbor. And first thing you, like, if you hadn't been, you go out on the Harbor cruise and it's wonderful, but, it's also the point of doing the documentary, the point of the museum, the point that people here are really so reverential of history. You go in this museum and there's an homage to, you know, Ray Moland and, and Bogart and all, all the uh, celebrities. There's an homage to the developers, an homage to the surf lifestyle um, here, to, you know, Dick Dale and all the, the pavilion and the ballroom right here. Uh, people are very, who are second, third generation, and some who are still around for so reverential and thankful that they grew up or, or came down here, spent this would spend summers because they say it was a just a magical, unspoiled time, right? Oh, it sounds absolutely amazing. This whole time you've been talking, I've just been picturing, you know, 
just movie stars sailing their sailboats in Newport Harbor as the billionaires look on drinking their coffee, you know? <laughs> you imagine, though, any given night, you go to the castaways, you go to Christian site, you go to these places and you'd run into these people, but then no one, knew. maybe you'd, you'd love to have a beer with them, but no one would, no now, one thought of now it wouldn't last two minutes, right? Mm -hmm. It's so uh, interesting, so interesting. It does and throw us back. Nothing but great stories about all these people. And then uh, just let, last one said so they used to all have this, uh, not all, there's this famous poker game, Cagney, Bogart, uh, Tyrone Power, Dick Powell, only men allowed, this, look, this is the 40s, only <laughs> men allowed, drinking, big time poker. The only woman was allowed was an 18 year old woman from New York and her name was Betty Bacall. She'd go on and become Lauren Bacall and she would come in and serve drinks. And that was at this one house that's still there on Collins Island that Cagney owned. Oh my story. God. This guy Tim Hang did. And I it's, it's so much true. It is true. So much fun. Thank you, Pete. Thank you for sharing. And yeah. I hope our viewers will absolutely run to watch this. It just sounds like a gift. So thank you. You bet. Thank you for uh for asking for being interested in it. And um let's we put cynicism aside. It was this unique time period. Good luck find like I said, finding stories about it. It's really un really undertold. Thank you again, and we'll be right back.